What up, Super Fun Force? We're here for TCG Thursdays. And basically what I want to talk about is a little bit of some new Flesh and Blood acquired cards I got recently. Starting with uh, the new MVP, which is Erase Face. Highly recommended card. People have been talking about this a lot. And if you're going to buy anything from this set, whether you want to try a new hero, character, or you just want to supplement any of your old cards, this is something you need to get. So what's really nice is like with Flesh and Blood... They're balancing out <clears throat> what kind of cards you get for each class and each set. So sometimes you can save some money, like an Uprising. It's very like, you know, ninja based for Draconic. The um, the new Illusionist also is Draconic, and then Icelander Ice. So like, essentially, if you're playing none of those classes, you probably don't need to buy much. There's only a few generic cards, maybe some things for you know, uh, Wizard and Warrior. I think were some other ones. I know there was a good amount of Wizard cards that you can look at, but. You know, for me, I don't play any of those really. I don't play, um, I was going to play Icelander, but what I did was I ended up getting ice cards for the Aria crew because Tales of Aria is like my favorite set for sure. I like all the heroes out of that set, Olden, Briar, Lexi. It took me a while to warm up for Lexi. I was a little bit cold on Lexi, <laughs> but um, I play her now. And that's why I got the ice cards and then I got Erase Face. Erase Face is great because... Uh, you know, it's it's a good card all around. It's an offensive card. It's balanced, so it's red. It doesn't, you know, have the ability to just give you resources, like, you know, if you don't use it. Uh, so you got to still consider putting it into your deck and how it fits into your resource curve. Uh, it only costs two, which isn't terrible because it does six damage. And even though it only blocks for two, it has the ability to, when it hits a hero, right, the cards and the tokens they own lose class and talent types till the end of the next turn. So this will affect most heroes. Not all of them, but it'll affect most heroes. It won't affect some of the base heroes, but um, what will happen is... Um, actually, I think it can pretty much stop a lot because, you know, even though, like, let's say a, uh, a ninja, you, uh, you stop a ninja card, you hit the ninja, you know, they can't really use the ancestral um, call, I think it is, the one that says uh, give a ninja card plus one or something because then now, you know... You, they technically don't have ninja stuff, but cards are and cards in classes that are really dependent on the keywords. It's gonna really mess up, right? So, yeah, any of the elementals that need the talents to need like the ice cards, whatever, lightning fusions, um, you know, the new draconic stuff, right? Like you need to build draconic chain links. Well, they're not gonna be draconic anymore. Um, you know, illusionist things, like light cards and things need to have a light requirement. So there's a lot of use for this. It's going to, I think, boil down to, again, not just the meta, but um, maybe what your matchups are like, right? If you struggle, let's say you, you're piloting a deck that uh, maybe has a little bit of a, of a tough time beating a certain class or two, um, this could help because if you maybe turn off their abilities, you can hopefully, you know, buy yourself a really good uh, turn to kind of recuperate or to, to kind of gain some somewhat of a tempo. So definitely an incredible card. At the very least, it's a sideboard card, right? Right. So definitely recommend that. And lastly, I want to just talk about really quick. So, um, well, I will just name two things really fast. I'll talk about um, the. Um, well, actually, you know, I'll do. I'll do this. I want to show you guys here the dragons. I will end it here. So, what I think is pretty cool is. Um, oh, I got two invoke yendurai. So, what's really cool is. Um, I've, I've been playtesting out some of um, Dromai stuff, the new Dra uh, Dragon Illusionist, and my initial review on that is I think it's a great concept. They took the Illusionist class, you know, that we saw with Prism, which was the first one I was interested in when I found about the game, and they turned it into like somewhat of like a summoner, right? And they started giving you this like, I guess you could say MMORPG, like, you know, material build, right? So, you know, if you play like Monster Hunter, Starcraft, Warcraft, whatever, um, you know, having to put the uh, the ash out and then transform it into your, you know, your, um, what is it, ash token or turn it into a dragon. Pretty cool, right? It's like you need the materials and you kind of like summon or invoke a dragon. And as you can see, they're two-sided and then they also have proxies. So that way you don't have to like take them out and flip them over. But essentially I bought a set. Um, I just didn't get the uh, the two legendaries yet, but I just wanted to buy a set because, you know, it's cool. It's historical. First time this class is out for, you know, um, Uprising. And maybe I'll, you know, I'll, um, I'll introduce this character into my collection of decks that I play for Blitz and, uh, what is it? Um, uh, Classic Constructed, of course. I, I wouldn't really say you could play this in Commoner. It's probably the only format where you can't play Dromai. These are all, like, uh, rare, right? So 
a uh, little bit of an interesting, um, you know, pickle, if you will, there, or caveat. But yeah, definitely I'll think about playing Dromai in the future in, you know, Blitz and Classic Constructed. But either way, uh, again, it's nice to have the artwork is pretty nice on all of them. You know, I think my favorites are like uh, Yendorai and um, I like the colors here of uh, Uvia, Ouvia, Dragon of Fertility. Nice. So yeah, you know, on one side you have the... Um, the um the control or you know an ash that you control you want to transform it into you know yendurai and while it's in this form while it's still an invocation action it still blocks for three but again if you're able to put the um ash token underneath him then bam now it does three damage whenever it attacks and it also has three hp so really cool to start to see this whole like concept come about now where you know the um, the creatures themselves, these allies, these illusionist tokens, can not only be destroyed with six powers, but it also can be damaged and it has its own little HP pool. So the other thing I was going to say then at the end is, I almost forgot, is Erase Face is good because it allows you to break Phantasm. So, you know, six damage. We know that that's the breaking point. If something that is ha you know has the Phantasm keyword and it gets blocked with an attack card that has at least, you know, six power or more, just stops the attack, breaks the chain, closes it up. So another plus, of course, for Erase Face. Okay, guys, well, that's my initial uprising video. So what I was going to say earlier about doing another type of, like, um, um, you know, showcase is I'm going to do one about the ice cards instead. I'll do that a little bit just to talk about, um, you know, people who play ice elementals for sure. But in the meantime, again, if you are just going to buy from this set to supplement your other characters and decks that aren't, you know, necessarily supported by Uprising, definitely pick up a race face and uh, maybe get the dragons just as a cool, uh, cool art pieces. You know, you don't have to go all out and buy like the Majestics or the Foils or whatever. You can just get, you know, the basic rare ones. All right, guys. Well, thanks so much. Don't forget, like and subscribe. I'm going to have new TCG stuff every Thursday from Flesh and Blood, Dragon Ball card game, some One Piece magic the gathering commander so hit that like and subscribe and don't forget keep your face say a prayer spread that love be positive be thankful and we come back at you peace